right? How would the solution look like? The, the same? The same? Well, it's almost the same because delta t is very small, right? But uh, what would be the difference? What would be the tiny difference between the solution at ut and solution ut plus dt? If what the speed of the shock is not so, yeah? Would it be shifted over by us times delta t or by dt? Yes, it'll be shifted a little bit over. So first of all, uh, let's convince ourselves that uh, the solution over the constant region it's still the same constant, right? That's because if you look at the differential equation, which actually holds on the left and right of the shock, right? I mean, they, they, the solution there is differentiable. It's actually a constant. So it applies over here. And if you look at the differential equation, which is uh, the equation within the parentheses, because u is a constant, right? Du dx is also a constant. Everything is a constant. So f has to be a constant. The flux is a constant. Right? So df dx is zero. Therefore, du dt is also zero, right? So, so basically, the solution over a cotton region should stay the same constant. That's why even after infinitesimal amount of time, because du dt is equal to zero in the constant region, so ul and ur would stay the same. But if I assume the speed of shock is us, then the location of the shock is going to be shifted, right? And uh, how much would be shifted? Would be the speed times dt, right? Right? Right. Okay. So now let's look at, now let's actually look at the integral form of the equation. And let's set an arbitrary place over the left shock and call it L. Let's set another arbitrary place over the right and call it R. Okay. Now over this finite region, there is going to be a difference between the flux over the left and the flux over the right, right? So this term would be F of UR minus F of UL. Agreed? Okay. Now, what is the first term? What is the time derivative? Okay. What is the time derivative of the total integrated stuff, integrated solution U over from L to R? How much did the integral change between the green and the red? UL minus UR times US times DT. Exactly. That's a very comprehensive answer. The difference in the integrated uh, uh, U is actually the region I'm shading right now, right? That's actually how much the integral has increased, right? And the rate of increase is, of course, the amount of increase, which is the area of this rectangle. The area of the rectangle is the height ul minus ur times width, which is us times dt, right? That's the area of the rectangle. That's how much it has increased over a time of dt, right? That's the rate of increase. That's actually ddt of the integrated u. So uh, what this equation, what the integral form says is that uh, the first term plus the second term has to equal to zero. That actually tells us what us has to be, right? The delta, the dt cancels, and us. If you divide, uh, if you move the blue to the right hand side and divide by uh, ul minus ur, what you get is f of ul 
minus f of u r because I'm moving things to the right hand side. The the the, the two f flip divided by u l minus u r. That's a derivation of how fast the shockwave has to move if the integral form of the differential equation is satisfied. All right. Okay, so, so that's actually interesting because uh, it's actually, uh, there is actually a special case for the speed of the shockwave. The special case is when the shockwave is tiny. The shockwave is tiny, which means the difference between UL and UR is tiny. So for, for tiny shockwaves, Right? That means the solution is almost continuous. Us is actually equal to df divided by du. Right. So when ul and ur are almost the same, then f of ul and f of ur are also almost the same. Right. Then us is df du. And remember, if I have this differential equation, if I have uh, if I have the differential equation, if the differential equation is du dt plus df dx equal to zero. That can be written as du dt plus a df over du times du dx using chain rule equal to zero, right? So this df du is exactly the coefficient before the spatial derivative. And we've already learned that uh, this is the called the characteristic speed, right? This number determines if the solution locally is moving towards the right or moving towards the left, and how fast the solution is moving. If you look at uh, the plot we had here, right? I mean, the DFDU determines if it's negative, it determines that uh, these contour lines are moving towards the left as time increases. And if DFDU is very negative, uh, which is probably here, then the line uh, is moving towards the left faster. If the FDU is very positive, it moves towards the right faster, right? So, so this DFDU is actually uh, determines when the solution is continuous. It, it determines how fast the local solution is moving. And when the FDU, when when the solution is discontinuous, then a finite then, then uh, a finite DFDU, this is really a delta F over delta U, right? A finite difference actually determines how fast a shockwave is moving. 